Okay, everyone. So we're going to um, continue talking about Twitter, and this time in the uh, aspect of hashtags and a live event. So you can go ahead and load up your web browser. You can log into your account. So go to Twitter, log into your account, and then we will we will look at hashtags and live content. Okay, so for example, uh, oh, the GO GOP debate is about to go on. So if you care about politics, uh, that debate is going to happen very soon. So that's something you could live tweet. Uh, although, you know, we're going to be in class for a bit on it. Well, um, let's do this. You log into Twitter, and when you're on your home screen, you're going to see, of course, the, you know, home notifications messages, the, the, the usual bar at the top and search. So we're going to search here. Search is very powerful on Twitter, but we're going to search for this hashtag. Uh, so the hashtag is of course the pound sign and then taste LA. Hashtag taste LA. This is an event that happened a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles, uh, hosted by the Los Angeles Times. So uh, as I said, I uh, teach this, but I also am part of a company. So in my company, we took a field trip up to Los Angeles, and we uh, were part of the Taste LA event. So if you click on the hashtag, these are the tweets um, that everyone was tweeting and the photos and the videos uh, about the actual event. Um, there's my client right there, if, if it shows up, Akistix Coco. So people are using a hashtag to sort of link together on a particular topic. That's one of the definitions of a hashtag. It's a keyword that is an active link that connects one tweet with other tweets. So we searched the hashtag TasteLA and all of these tweets appeared here. And so, for example, the hashtag right here, TasteLA, field to fork that's a hashtag and if you click on field to fork basically it does a search uh, it searches for the hashtag up there field to fork so a hashtag is just an active link that does a search for you related to a keyword people can of course tweet text and video pictures sounds etc so when you search anything like a hashtag at the at the uh, at the top of the screen you have various ways to show those results. You have the top results, live, accounts, etc. So if you choose live, whatever new tweets that people are tweeting with that hashtag will appear. If you choose top, these are going to be the hashtags that maybe have had the most act I mean the most tweets that have had the most activity, retweets, comments, etc. Maybe an account has a hashtag in the biography. Remember, we can write a biography. So here, the taste has this text and the hashtag of the uh, of the event. So that's got an active link. We have photos, videos, more options. Notice under more options, we can say, "Show me these tweets near me." So people always ask. Can I use Twitter to reach people in my location and such? Yes, oftentimes there's something about accessing content near me. So if I switch over to the live tab, 39 minutes ago, CGS tweeted, see our wrap on the Taste LA and call all the great pictures shared social media. So this one's got two hash uh, three hashtags, Taste LA, social media LA events. So my recommendation is don't put more than three hashtags per tweet 
because at a certain point too many hashtags make you look like a spammer. If you're just putting all of these keywords to try to get the right audience and you put 10 of them, 12 of them, well you're running out of space for a real message and you're gonna look like a spammer with a with a tweet full of uh, hashtags. So I would say one to three tweets um, if you use them in a I mean, one to three hashtags if you use them in a tweet. If you can get the message across with one hashtag, that's perfect. If you need up to three, I would not go more than three. So right here, Ro the Roaming Bean says, I just ate the apple butter I picked up from your booth at Taste LA. Heaven, pure heaven. I got one of those too, actually. It was like a little bottle of apple butter. I haven't tasted it yet. I gave it to my mom, so hopefully there's still some left. But um, it was a great event. Uh, lots of great free food and booze and it was a really fun event took a lot of photos and if you look at our client aqui es Texcoco you'll see uh, right here if you go to the Texcoco Twitter account you can see the the photos of the event and there's a video coming up there's the owner of the restaurant and so um, we went there we we were active on Twitter we were active on uh, Instagram we were active on all the social networks, basically, really to to reach an audience. Because some people are on all day on Facebook, some people all day on Instagram. So if you, as a company, try to reach out to people on as many networks as possible, then you can uh, find that audience. So here, we were looking at the hashtag Taste LA. This was a live event. So even though on the assignment I have you know a TV event really you know if you don't watch TV and such what kind of live event could you tap into and use Twitter is there some concert coming up is there a family reunion uh, hopefully something where there can be some activity because if it's a family reunion and you're the only person that uses Twitter uh, that's not so interesting maybe uh, a concert or an event or TV TV is very popular you know, you're watching TV uh, on, on a tablet or whatever, and then on your laptop you've got Twitter, or your TV's on your laptop, and then you've got Twitter on your phone. So how do you know what hashtag to use? Here, Taste LA on their website had the hashtag. On their Twitter account, they had the hashtag. On the flyers that they printed in the posters, they had the hashtag. So no one's going to know your hashtag unless you kind of promote it and such. And anyone can invent a hashtag. I can make a tweet right now and, and say, you know, uh, get a great website. And I can make up, make my amazing website now. That's my hashtag. It probably does not exist. No one else thought of it, possibly. Um, and so I can make it up. Just because I make up a hashtag doesn't mean anyone will care. If I don't have enough followers, if I don't get shares, if I don't spread this hashtag, it's not going to go anywhere. So I usually don't recommend to create your own hashtag to try to piggyback on an existing hashtag to, to join the bandwagon, not in a negative way, but to, to join people and companies that are tweeting about a particular topic. So the homework, uh, I'll be coming back and forth to it, is you've got this live event that, you're, that you've got one week to plan, um, to, to find, to figure out. It could be on the weekend, any day of the week. It could be due, you know, uh, you could turn it in by 10.30 p.m. next Wednesday, as long as it was some sort of live event that I can verify. And I can verify it by following your hashtag, because you will need to use a hashtag with the event. So oftentimes you're watching TV, there's going to be a hashtag somewhere. You're watching a movie, there's a hashtag there. Um, radio, bands have a hashtag, whatever. You're going to need to figure out the hashtag for your particular event, live tweet it. But it has to be a recent event? Or? It has to be an event that exists between today and next Wednesday. Oh. If it already passed, it's, it's, it's not that fresh. So you want something live right now. So even though this was a week ago, there's still a couple people tweeting here, but definitely on the day of the event, there was like nonstop tweets. That's what you want. You want to find an event that is happening uh, live. Can it be a real 
live for band phone sites? It could be on site like this. We went up to LA for this and then we, we did it there. Um, in a sense, you don't have to actually go to LA to be part of this. You can be tweeting here in your pajamas at night while it's happening. That'll work as long as you're part of it. And I'll explain how to be part of an event in a moment. But the idea is that we want some kind of live event on TV, in real life, something between now and next Wednesday. So the way you're part of it is a couple of ways, active or passive. I'll talk about passive first. I know the mango-shaped ice with salted plum. Um, I know the hashtag of this event, hashtag TasteLA. Passively, the way, I can, the way I can be a part of this event is I've got the tweet button, and then I can start writing uh, text, I can start adding links, I can start adding photos, video, whatever, and using the hashtag. So I could say, let's say it's going on right now, I'm gonna say, just had the most amazing, let's see what did I have that was really tasty. Um, too many free drinks, I don't remember. Um, it was like, um, I don't know, tacos. I uh, just had the most amazing uh, taco at Taste LA. As you're starting to write a hashtag, it might rec it might recommend a hashtag, so you can quickly select it. Um, so then, let's say I add a photo of that taco, and then I tweet it. Okay, I'm part of the event. I'm tweeting, not just one tweet. I'm gonna keep. If I'm really at the event or I'm really watching the TV, I have a thought. Or a photo I want to share of the event, I want to tweet it on, on a regular basis. I'm not going to tell you. Make sure you do 10 tweets. Make sure you do 4 tweets. Make sure you do 40 tweets. Whatever you think is good, uh, as long as you're part of this live event, and use the hashtag. Because again, in these class, honestly, let me cover the mic here. Honestly, in these classes, most of my classes, if you want an A, ask me, free A. But did you learn anything? And so, uh, whatever makes sense to you inside of the uh, live event should work. But you want to use the hashtag, you want to tweet. This one is a passive kind of tweet. If I'm just like this about, look at me, look at me, I did this, I did that, here's a photo, the end, you'll get a grade, no problem, it won't affect really a negative grade, but I recommend, and again, what do you get out of this class, real things? I recommend don't have it so passive, be active, and by active, I mean, look at what everyone else is tweeting. Tanya, Tanaya over here tweeted this. It's so easy for me to favorite it, retweet it, or better yet, reply. The point of this live tweeting also is to get followers. There's so many times, so many examples that I can tell you that either I personally or for a company, we live tweeted an event because my company works with restaurants. As the restaurant, we could be t live tweeting during America's Top Chef, and you won't believe so many followers suddenly follow you because you're tweeting about something that someone else cares about. My company here is a restaurant. I'm tweeting during a cooking show. People that care about cooking are also following along and tweeting. They see my company stuff, my photos, and all of that. They follow. So you'll see that if you engage in a live event, not passively, actively, you will get followers. So I'm going to be active right here. Mango shaved ice with salted plum, courtesy of whatever, TBT heat wave. I'm going to reply to that. I'm going to click reply. In this case, it's going to reply to the original person that posted, which was Tanaya. And Tanaya was mentioning fluff ice. So I can reply, and both of those accounts will get a notification that says, Victor replied to, to you. Victor replied to you. Or I can delete one of them and then just tweet, and uh, that'll be targeting, that'll be replying to just that one person. I am going to reply to both of them. Let's see, uh, something positive, usually. That looks amazing. Is there any left? adding a question on social media. Many of these things that we'll talk about in one network will apply to another. So here I'm going to ask a question. When we talk about other networks, we'll also see that it's useful to ask questions. 
So I'm saying something positive, something on topic. I'm going to say, is there any, is there any left? And then add the hashtag, TasteLA. This is the active tweeting. Passive a moment ago was just me kind of talking to myself or my followers kind of passively. This is active. I found people that are part of the live event to reply to them, to favorite their stuff, to retweet their stuff. That's what you want to do more. So yes, I will tweet that out. You are going to tweet out to random strangers. Don't be afraid to do that. That's how you get new followers. So you do want to look a little bit more effort instead of simply replying to everyone or favoriting their things, their, their tweets, or also to take a look at, if you hover over a profile, you will see a preview. And then on the preview, you can see how many tweets they have and their other stats and what they've written in the biography. So this person is related to food stuff. So my company's about food. They have food in their biography. I could further check their tweets if they're about food. And the point of this is to find out, should I interact with someone really that really is going to connect with my company and reply and, and be a follower? Sometimes there's a reply, there's a chain of tweets that make up a story. Like right here, I'm seeing that the actual event, the taste, they, they wrote here, our social team was running around like crazy, it happens next year. And so that was part of a conversation, you can see that, it says view conversation. So you'll see all of the tweets that have come before that are linked together in a conversation. So I started off with up here, thanks for the wonderful write-up and gorgeous photos. We're glad you had a great time. And then Blissed Out Cook says this, and then the taste reply to that, and a reply, reply, reply. So that's going back and forth. That's another way to get followers. If you just give a favorite to someone, they might like it and give you a favorite back. The next level up is they might um, retweet you, comment, or follow. But if you keep, you know, if you keep it going, if you have this rapport, this back and forth, oftentimes that will result in a follow because they're going to see that you have something valuable and they want to follow you. Do you guys know this, uh, this acronym right here, ICYMI? That's in case you missed it. In case you missed it. And sometimes people make that a hashtag. Hashtag I C Y M I, in case you missed it. That's pretty popular nowadays. That's kind of a trend overall in social media. The the in case you missed it tag. Um, it might be a trend, it might be a fad. You know, a fad might go away, a trend might stick around. So you might think about using trends or fads um, in your tweets and such to reach an audience. So this could be about, it's it's sort of like related to the TBT. Do you know what the TBT is? What? TBT. Sorry. Throwback Thursday. So there's a tradition on many social networks. Every Thursday, you post something that is a throwback, that is a, a memory, that something happened before. You're kind of bringing back something that previously happened, and you might hashtag it. Sometimes people hashtag it as TBT. Hashtag TBT, that's Throwback Thursday. Obviously, you can TBT on a Monday, although, you know... Or FPF. FPF, what's that one? Flashback Friday. Flashback Friday, yes. So every day of the week has something cool, but FBF also Flashback Friday. So bring back something that happened on a Friday, um, and Thursday, and, and so forth. What's that one? Wednesday. Wednesday, way back Wednesday, so they've all got a day, and you're going to learn this stuff as you keep using it, so... 
um, as you start typing the hashtag Thursday, this is what what's happening. You can also spell it out. But as you start typing a hashtag, you'll get suggestions. And if any of those suggestions apply to you, then you can tap into them. So, you know, Thursday night football. Hey, there's football on Thursday. Maybe that's something to do a live, uh, a live tweeting on. And then, of course, everyone's favorite, Catterday. That's when everyone tweets about cats on Saturday. Today's also National Guacamole Day, too. National Guacamole Day? Really? Yeah. Food, food, food holiday. Food holiday. No one's using it. Oh, I spelled it wrong. And uh, guacamole. Yeah. So that's a variety of uh, ideas live events there's this website I forgot to look it up but there's this website that I like oh, yeah this one's it um, if you go to if you go to holidayinsights.com this is gonna tell you about National Hot Dog Day National Best Friend Day it's going to tell you about um, UFO Abduction Month, you know, all these weird, interesting things that you could also use for humor, to reach an audience, to put something interesting online, HolidayInsights.com. So this month is Baby Safety Month. Honey Month and Hispanic Heritage Month. So you would look that up here to give you ideas maybe for tweeting. Let's see bizarre and unique days. Also have yes, exactly. Um, so there's so many things to tweet about. For the assignment that's coming up, we're going to do a live tweeting. This is Better Breakfast Month. So if I've got a restaurant and maybe I've got something to serve for breakfast, that's something I could tweet about too. So basically I'm just showing this site for ideas. What is this website? It's called HolidayInsights.com. And they tell you the, the events for this month? Events and holidays and just interesting things that happen throughout the, throughout the year. Birthdays, flower of the month. Like September 1st was the birthday of Estee Lauder. Who else here? Conway Twitty. Dr. Phil had a birthday on September 1st. Gloria Stefan. Keanu, Ru Keanu Reeves, he had a birthday September 2nd. And Selma Hayek. Let's see, what's today? The 16th? We're, let's see what's who had birthdays on the 16th. Lauren Bacall, B.B. King, David Copperfield. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to do these too many times, but we're going to have an in-class activity uh, where um, here's the activity. So we're going to spend a, uh, maybe five minutes at the most. What you're going to do is you're going to write on paper or on, on uh, Word or whatever. You're going to brainstorm yourself first. You're going to brainstorm 
um, five possible ideas about what you can live tweet about. So let's spend about five minutes on your own. Think of five ideas, uh, and then in five minutes we'll talk about them. So it's 5.42 at 5.47, uh, we'll share them. So take a couple of minutes to, to write down some ideas, and then we'll, we'll check with people.